Hey, it's Jack. I've got another radio video here. So what I've got here is a fanny pack that I've set up as a man pack. I've been playing a lot with this idea of having these man packable radios that are quick to deploy for tactical style communications. Um, I've been really interested in a few of the videos that have been put up by the tech prepper, KT1RUN, on YouTube. Um, he has a lot of videos with these kind of man packs and these man pack frames. So I've kind of, this is my version of that. So this is a Maxpedition Proteus Versa pack as a fanny pack. So when I open this up here, right on the back, I have right here where I can pull out of the Molly a um, one of these little rubber duck BNC antennas. Um, this is this antenna works pretty good. Uh, when I open up here, I'm immediately able to pull out my handset, which I will talk about in a second why it is the way it is. And I'm able to put my antenna on there, I'm able to if my radio is plugged in. Okay, so now that my radio is plugged in, I'm able to then at this point set my button. The radio turns on. And here it's listening to the local repeater right now, so we'll just uh, turn that down. But right there, I'm on the air um, with 25 watt radio. Uh, pretty quick to deploy, just a matter of seconds. And just as fast to pack up. So I'm going to pull this apart here and we'll take a look at how I have this set up and why I did the things I did. So I would like to note this bag is still a work in progress. One of the big things that I still want to try to make work is I want to get it to work with this uh, military surplus H250 handset, um, which is why my setup is partially the way it is. I'm waiting on a specific adapter from Disco32 that will adapt from this plug uh, to the Kenwood plug, which I have adapted this KT8900 to the, the Kenwood plug. Um, right on this side is where I keep extra batteries. I'm just using 3S lithium polymer batteries and I have a bunch of from my RC stuff. So right there, there's 6.2 amp hours between the two and I right now have it plugged into another 4 amp hour. So that's over 10 amp hours of, of 3S batteries and I could easily carry a little bit more if I wanted to. Um, also in here I have a LiPo voltage checker alarm so I know if I get low voltage and I can check my batteries. Um, on this other side, this pocket I'm not really using, but this is where I carry my extra stuff in case I need it. The first thing I have is I have um, a cigarette plug wired up on a short length of wire to an XT60. So this way I can plug it into a car and power it off of that easily. Um, I have this little bag that has a few adapters. Um, I have a little headphone uh, in here and then I can then use if I wanted to use that to run my radio instead of using the uh, speakers. I also have this uh, PL259 to PL259 adapter. And I also have this SMA to BNC adapter so I can use these antennas on my handheld in the event that this goes down. Um, I don't really, for this system, I don't really trust this Chinese uh, QIT radio to um, for life safety type of stuff. I'm mostly just testing this concept, and this radio seems to be a pretty good fit for this because it's so small and able to fit it in this bag, and it has a pretty reasonable power, boasting 25 watts on VHF and 20 watts on UHF. So I'm just testing this, um, but this is a, so having the SMA adapter is nice because I'm going to have like one of my Yezu handhelds with me. In the event that this kit did go down, I could at least still use my good antennas that I have with my handheld, and so that's kind of my backup. Um, also in this pocket, I have the mic that came with the radio. As much as I'd like to get away from this because it's kind of big, I'm kind of stuck needing to carry it because it has the ability to um, punch it up in the program the radio, and some of these buttons are really hard to not have on the radio. You can get around some of it, but it's really nice to have this, so I just kind of have this set up in here in case I need it, and I can plug it in. Um, before we get into the main thing, we'll get this external pocket. So in here, I just have another rubber duck antenna. This nice little short one works pretty well. And it's uh, able to fit in this bag easily. Um, now in here, I have a staged J-pole so I'm able to deploy it. So the first thing I'm able to grab here is this. This is basically my little homemade arborist throw bag. So anyway, um, what, it, what it is, is it's a bolt basically wrapped in a shop rag with some zip ties. And I have a short piece of paracord clipped onto it. So with this, I'm able to use this to throw it over a tree or similar. Look at this. I'm able to pull this out. And then I have all the paracords staged in here where it will come off easily. 
And then I have here, this is a little roll where it rests with paracord. There's probably at least 30 feet of paracord here. And then after that, I get to this. So this is my feed line and antenna. So I have a short length coax here adapted to BNC. So I'm able to hook it up to the bulkhead. And then this is a roll up uh, swim jam antenna. So if I'm pretty able to deploy this antenna pretty fast, if I have a big tree or something, I can just throw this line up over a branch, um, deploy this antenna, hook it up, and have a much better antenna than this little rubber duck. But if I just need to get something up, out quick or I'm trying to hit a repeater, I can use this little rubber duck on here. And that works pretty good using the one of these two antennas that I have. So I have three antennas for this system overall. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of this bag. So let me pull the main radio out and I'll show you what's going on here. So in the bag, I keep these couple pieces of paper folded up. This first one is basically a cheat sheet of how to enter a repeater into the radio because it's a little complicated and I'm still pretty new to doing that. So I have that just in case I need it. And then this is my wiring diagram of how I've adapted this to the Kenwood plug. Um, this seems to be working okay for me so far. But um, this is just what I've kind of figured out online and messing around on forms and stuff. Um, this is how I've kind of done this. I also have a little write and array notebook and pen, so I have some sort of logbook. But this is the main radio itself. So here's the battery, XT60, another LiPo. This is just currently just using a little Baofeng um, speaker mic while I'm waiting on my adapter to be able to use the H250 handset here. So this is just kind of how I have this set up to test. Um, so here what I have is I have um, a 2.5 and, and a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the female side that I have coupled together. I have a spacer in there with a piece of cardboard and some electrical tape to make it work on the Kenwood plug. So I'm able to just to unplug this and there's my connector. I have a broken out uh, three and a half mil male side that plugs into the speaker jack back here. So I'm using that to pull my audio out of the radio. And then I have made a custom RJ45 cable that plugs into the front and runs back here and is where I'm pulling like the microphone and power and stuff in order to power everything. So that's kind of the setup. The main cable off the radio has this custom RJ45 and headphone jack. And then off this side, it then just goes into a standard Kenwood plug. Um, I've made this little kind of pack frame. It's pretty light duty. It's just this little like sheet aluminum that I had, um, which seems to be about perfect for this. Um, it is still kind of flexible. It's not like a super durable like roll cage type of thing because for what I'm doing and since it's in this bag it doesn't really seem necessary. The other main cable is I have uh, a right angle adapter in there adapting from PL259 to BNC and then I have a BNC bulkhead that runs to this little angle plate then I have screwed onto it. The way I also have this is I have the mobile mount attached to the radio and then I've attached everything else to the mobile mount so like through those screws on the side is how I'm attaching these little aluminum kind of protecting rails I've made. Um, and then with that, it's also able to tail stand if I'm on like a table here, which is pretty useful if I route the cables behind. So I'm able to just kind of set it here and I can run the radio this way and I can kind of look down above on it, which works pretty well. Um, I'm able to access all the controls really easily, volume and selecting on the knob and I've got all the buttons right here. Um, I've been pretty happy with this so far. I've also, uh, wrapped these aluminum with this little bit of duct tape just to kind of make it not quite so sharp. But, uh, I'm still kind of experimenting with this as a system. But this man pack's worked pretty well, um, so far. And I'm pretty happy with the speaker mic. Um, but if I can get it to work with the H250 handset, I think that's just going to be pretty cool. So that's till to come. If I get that to work, there'll probably be an update on that. But this is kind of my man pack so far. If I do another future video, I'll show a deployment of the J-Pole antenna. Um, but all this fits in that little fanny pack, and this gives me a pretty effective VHF UHF radio system with pretty good power. So I've been pretty, pretty stoked about this project so far. Um, well, thank you guys for watching. Um, and this is kind of my little man pack. I'll try to keep videos coming as I come up with stuff. But like this one, for example, took a little bit of work because it took a lot of sourcing different components and figuring out the wiring and getting everything together. Thank you guys, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.